Hello, everyone, and welcome to ERA's first technology talk webinar session. My name is Marie Karekla, ERA's engagement and program coordinator. Today, we are running our first technology talk session, um, which will be presented by Pacific Ventilation on Virusudal AHU filtration and indoor air quality. Just before we um, get underway, if you do have any questions um, throughout the presentation, please type them into the Q&A function that's located just at the bottom of your screen. Um, and our presenters will go through as many questions as possible um, in the time permitting. So I'd now like to introduce to you um, our presenters for today. So we have Peter Gibson um, and Alexandra um, Stuber, who will be taking us through today's session. So Alexandra, I might hand things over to you to get us underway. Thank you. Today's presentation, we start with an uh, introduction to why indoor air quality is important, what are the consequences to a poor indoor air quality, what can we do to fix it and improve it. Then we start to talk about hygienic by design, plenty of new solutions towards how to improve your indoor air quality. And the main part of that presentation would be the Dell 3 Plus technology covered by Pierre. All right, the indoor air revolution is now. So why do we talk a lot nowadays of indoor air quality? First of all, it's very important to understand that the air we breathe today is very different than what we had 50 or 60 years ago and is much more polluted. So when we talk about pollution, we have two types of pollution. Natural pollution, such as uh, bushfires or the wind blowing sand into a city towards your air conditioning equipment or in your house, as well as man-made pollution, such as driving your car, taking a plane, or just a manufacturing plane. Recent study shows that Australians spend 90% of their time indoors, 7% in their car, and only 3% outdoor. Obviously, this is also closely related to what we faced for the last two years. But still, this does not change the fact that we spend a lot of time indoor. Indoor air quality can be quantified. And they were quantified recently by the CSIRO. And we talk about billions of dollars, about 12 billions of dollars per year due to poor indoor air quality. This is due to people getting sick, taking sick leave, or simply the loss of efficiency. So you're sick, you don't feel warm enough, you feel cold, you're not fully concentrated. You lose production, $12 billion, billion per year. So what can we do to make sure that we improve our indoor air quality? There is existing and new technology. But if we talk only about what we know, we know the Australian standards, we know the NCC and Section J, those help drastically to improve our indoor air quality. But we can look a bit further as well. We can look into international standards. We can also look into the filtration standard. That's the next slide. And lastly, we can talk about year event certification. What is important to us and what that really means for us. Now, if we talk specifically about this ISO 16894, what it is, why it's good for us. It's a standard that talk about what kind of particles are dangerous for our health, which is very different than what we use today on Australian standard. In this one, we talk about if you want to filter this size particle, this would be the type of filter you need. So what you see here on the screen is four different categories four different type of particle sizes. Particle bigger than 10 micrometers, 
below 10 micrometers, etc. In Australia, what we do is a combination of filtration. We tend to have a coarse filter, and as you can see, a coarse filter will only collect the visible particle, so such as leaves, insects, or even visible dust. And we usually have a second filter that is a bulk filter, F5, F6, F7, F9. But these bulk filters will be able to collect PM10, PM2.5, or PM1 particles. Now, what is very important to understand is, especially during today's situation, is COVID-19. COVID-19 is a virus. And as you can see, viruses are of size one micrometer or below. This means if you want to collect or stop or even neutralize viruses, as Peter will mention shortly after me, you need a filter that can collect PM1 size particle. On the right side, I'm sure you had the time to see that drawing, so we'll not describe it. But that tells you where those small particles can go in your body. And this is why you're getting sick with viruses and bacteria. Now, there are plenty of things we can do to improve our indoor air quality. And this is why everything we do, passive ventilation, is hygienic by design. So while you look at this small video on the right side, I will briefly talk about the hygienic certification by Eurovet. Now we do this, sorry, I will do this one again. The hygienic certification is something Eurovet started a couple of years ago and is very easy to understand. It has a three stars rating that gives you some information on how hygienic your product is. The more star you have, the more hygienic your product is. This is very different than what we used to have in terms of, is my product efficient? Is my product suitable for that region? This is a standard, this is a certification that looks at hygienic portion of your product. I'm not gonna talk about that too much today, but if you guys are interested to know more, we can talk about that another time. Lastly, I think it's very important to understand what certification means and why Eurovent is very important for us. Eurovent is impartial and is independent. They don't have any reason to give you good results. You pay them upfront, you give them your product, and they tell you what your product is worth. What you see here is the difference between HRI, Eurovent, and what we see quite a lot in Australia, self-certified. I put some interrogation mark because we don't really know. If you test your product yourself, you will tend to be very kind toward your result. Whereas Eurovent is not your friend. You send a product and they tell you exactly how it's worked. And as you can see, they not only test the product, they do much more. They also certify and have a look at your factory. They do random audit on site and they even check your software. And it's not only limited to the product. Put it simply, Euron is here to make sure that a manufacturer is not lying to its customer. That's it for the introduction. So I uh, will leave this part to Peter to explain what the Dell Tree Plus is and why it's highly beneficial for, for you guys. Peter, leave it to you. Thank, thank you, Alex, and welcome everybody to uh, our presentation this afternoon. And we appreciate uh, giving us some of your, your precious time in this that you all have. So we'll talk about today Dell Tree Plus technology, which is a filtration technology we've uh, been waiting out for a few months and is readily available uh, to the open market globally exclusively through tube ventilation. So Dr. Plus technology uh, successfully is a successful certified and deployed in the in the healthcare sector technology prior to the technology being introduced to ventilation in the face masks and surgical gowns industry through 
uh, has been to the Dutchery and to the apartment here. Uh, the success, of the, the enormous success of, of the of the Delta Plus technology in these health uh, sectors uh, are now used in the ventilation industry uh, and our ventilation industry ready through uh, bag filters, which we've uh, introduced to the market today. Okay, okay so when we talk about for the products of uh, the, the primary vendor, our partner here, who, uh, who we exclusively represent, uh, Delta and Filters, they're a Belgian based company. Uh, they, they represent a whole host of uh, plant sectors, including Patrac, Biopharma, Automobile, Clean Room, Molecular Filtration, Gas Turbine Industry, as well as food processing. We'll focus today on the product applications for the health product. Okay, so when it comes to filtration basics in Deltro Plus, uh, Alex introduced earlier the um, what is what is PM1 and et cetera. Uh, and what does that mean about filtration and how you, how you handle particulates? Deltro Plus is a EPM1 90% uh, bag filter. Effectively, it's the most efficient bag filter in the marketplace in terms of dust holding capacity. And energy efficiency. Okay, so when you compare it to HEPA filters, uh, Deltra Plus and HEPA are uh, not the same. Uh, a HEPA filter is a very specific product for a very specific product. Deltra Plus is exclusively a bag filter with advanced plasma technology which is able to neutralize and destroy viruses on contact with the medium surface control. So Deltra is not a replacement for a HEPA filter in, in, a, in a conventional uh, schematic. Purpose. HEPA filters, in, by design uh, and by the technology, cannot be replaced or put into an air in a unit, uh, or the retrofit, let's say, unless it is suitable for the application. Uh, so, have a very different, different profile. Compared to a Deltro Plus bag filter, common peppers are uh, high, high pressure drop and very high in energy consumption. Uh, the, the different frame and leakage class. Uh, and require their own very specific footprint in, in the land and space, which is not very really fitable. Uh, by virtue of their design and their, their material, they're a very high priced product compared to conventional filters, and they do not, by design, inactivate viruses on contact. So they're designed to capture PM1 grade uh, particulates, close to one micron, but they capture only low grade particulates. So Deltroid Plus is a new type of filter which is provenly neutralizing viruses. And we we'll talk about this from the experience first of, of the application of the viruside solution in the health sector with Delta AM uh, with their face masks and surgical gowns. It's now at the stage where introducing these viruside filters or the viruside technology into, into filtration uh, into air handling units, uh, regardless of manufacturer, is the opportunity we presented to the market today to solve this issue of capturing and neutralizing viruses, which I'm going to at the moment. So, the technology itself is capable of neutralizing or destroying bacteria or virus on contact. That's where it's made based on how that works at the moment. Uh, we have a product which is scientifically tested by Luxembourg Institute of Science and Technology, an independent lab test. We also have a certified ISO 16890 filter. Uh, with also uh, European performance uh, certification as well. Additionally, and finally, we have proven efficiency with Eurovent certified performance A plus energy class ratings. We'll talk about that briefly in a moment. It's a little bit different to what Alex talked about before with hygienic by design Eurovent classification, but I'll explain what it means when I come inside for a quick Okay, so we start to now look at the at what makes the filter so special. Okay, so we'll go through a basic schematic. Uh, what the virus side plasma is, it's a plasma coated uh, filter surface which is applied to a filter media. So in this schematic, you'll see a the start of the manufacturing process. We roll on the, the base filter material, which in this context is called a substrate, not treated, and the virus side. Uh, plasma technology or, or uh, 
material that we use, which is a citric acid based material, which is biodegradable. This is treated onto the broken surface through a graft virus, graft virus like process. They're not sprayed on because spray, spraying the, 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 the solution that's poured onto the filter doesn't have um, as great a penetration instead of grafting this virus into the filter. Not onto the filter. It's not visible, you can't touch it, it's not, it's not, it's, it's, it's a very um, uh, innocuous looking solution. It's not visible at all. It's not. So the filter media, which gives us uh, a base for the product, is a different media than is, is used today by traditional or current vendors in this uh, filtration space. It's a wave synthetic media, which you can see here on the right hand side. Uh, it has a very, very high dust holding capacity compared to conventional or current mineral products with an extremely low pressure drop, which is how we get our EPM1 90% efficiency uh, classification for, and I've stated and we continue to, the most efficient bag filter in the market by virtue of high dust holding capacity and low pressure drop. The depth filtration without electrostatic charge is, is how we bring the, the graphing of the biocide uh, into the media. And the following slide will go through some of the steps of how this works. Back on the slide. Okay, so effectively the manufacturing process is five specific specific steps as to how we graft or get this the uh, citric acid based material into the broken media. So basically we have a, a role in step one of the, the, the base media, uh, which, which is rolled into the, the, the machine. Uh, it's in, in step one, in step two is the application of the citric acid layer onto the media for grafting process uh, or customizing this in this specific machine. Step three is the output of that, that processed media, which is increasing the biocide plasma grafted into the media, uh, onto the roll in step four, uh, which is the uh, re rolling it back into the base material. And step five to complete that process is to, is to wrap that, that media in a plastic to ensure that um, we protect the, the filter uh, so it's not immediately absorbing uh, the, the environment around it, which could. Uh, yeah, start to have to whatever the economies might be. So, straight away, before we go to manufacturing of the actual filter, the media is wrapped onto the slide. So, we we'll talk now about a four step process of how does the technology work and how do we uh, inactivate uh, or make viruses uh, um, disappear, let's say. So, we have uh, in the schematic here, we have a fresh and return air uh, side of the filter. The, the green section, the blue layer below it, that's representative of the filter surface. And the downstream of that, we have the supply air side of the, of the system that's forward. So we're going to look to the four steps. Step one would be the, uh, the, the bacteria symbols, as you can see. Um, virus or viruses or bacteria land on the treated surface. Okay, in, in the second step, the virus side on contact with the, uh, the bacteria that hits that media. Um, the virus side begins to destroy the genetic material or makeup of the virus. In that destructive period, uh, it, 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 it stops the, the media itself, sorry, stops the, the, the virus itself from replicating or blocking. So, therefore, uh, by step four, uh, the viruses are uh, genetically blocked and they can't replicate, and so therefore now they cannot be inactivated and cannot survive. So, we stop. Um, we stop at the surface layer of the, of the filter, the virus to the bacteria on the spot. So, when we talk to some core benefits, uh, we, we're talking about efficient and hygienic air filtration, uh, provide a hands on solution for improving the air quality. Okay, so within, within the city ventilation company, we, we have a host of solutions which fall under our hygienic by design category. And filters form a part of that solution. Uh, in this context, the filter can capture and inactivate viruses and bacteria, so making it the safest uh, filter in the market to do that we, we stop it in its tracks, uh, we inactivate it at the filter level. Effectively, effectivity of the, of the 
and the clicker media is proven in dry and wet environments and in open and closed circuits. So dry and wet environments means low and high uh, relative humidities, as well as open and closed circuits being uh, return, returning uh, circulating systems only, or uh, fresh air systems or a mixture of both. So open and closed circuits, the, the filter activity is proven, and so therefore we don't have any application, uh, strict application restrictions. The way, the way we apply these and the, the effect of the virus side on the, on the filter is we reduce the risk of transmission of, of viruses on or through the filter and we also uh, act to look, uh, prevent transmission of proliferation of viruses and bacteria in the airstream. This is all effective within 10 minutes or after 10 minutes of contact with the surface with the virus out. So once the bacteria or viruses in contact with the filter with the virus side placed on it, they're effectively inactivated and they're no longer infectious or dangerous, making exposure safe and easy, as well as making it safer restaurant for the occupants of the space for recognition. So what, what we have here is a purpose. We have for facility and building managers They'll try to find to for additional safety in exchange with other bag filters. So effectively, if you think about the current systems, with bag filters on board, be those large rooftop systems, air handling units, uh, fan filter units, etc. Anywhere we have a bag filter, uh, we can replace with the Delta Plus product with the one one percent filter. Uh, I must stress this is not the case with epic filtration. And the Delta Plus is not intended to replace the other filter. So we talk now we'll merge into the efficiency discussion. I highlighted earlier that the EPM 190% uh, ISO certified um, design is the most efficient bag filter from the marketplace. Uh, First and foremost, when we talk about an EPM 190 Delta Plus, we're, we're comparing uh, this filter to a conventional F9 by, by any 779 standards. Okay, so it's extraordinarily high efficiency uh, in capture uh, and in efficiency as well, offering low pressure drop and the highest dust hold capacity in this category. Uh, so we, we, we talk now about your event in a slightly different context to Alex. But not so different. Uh, your event certified performance in the context of the filter is about energy rating. And this product uh, has an A plus energy rating, which is the highest category in your event filtration movement. So operators do not need to worry about increasing energy costs with putting this technology into the field. So the, 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 the new media we use is a new media that's very, very efficient, which gives us very, very low pressure drop. So this helps us with our energy consumption. We're not, we're not putting a, a great barrier in front of the, 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 the system or in front of the fan to create an increase of energy. On the contrary, we're providing a much better solution and we can get media to do that for as well. But in, increased energy costs are not an issue. As well, additional deflation does not negatively impact performance of the filters or rust holding um, device, nor does it impact efficiency because of Okay, so we talked about certification ISO 6890 earlier, and now we talk about the zero event certified energy efficiency. Now, this, this is an extract from uh, the Gulf Wind uh, from the catalog, but it's a good. Uh, so when we talk about earlier, I was talking about uh, hygienic uh, air handling units in the three-star rating. That talks about a whole system, and uh, there's several pieces of mechanics of that air handle for uh, ventilation device which make that um, fairly certified uh, product. When it comes to filtration, we're talking about um, imaging as, as we do with the other product. But here we talk about it in the of so to cover off, um, on each of the year event labels that come with the Delta N product and specifically with Delta Plus, 
you'll see this here. What, what, what a cool series. I'm not going to let flow of the product for the, for the flow uh, of, of the product and then speak for out. We talk about initial efficiency. We talk about minimum efficiency. Annual energy consumption for our hours per year, as well as energy costs, and that's all contained within the label. It's really talk about the five choices in the group. So, look at the context, and we talk about EPM1 in the context of this meeting. EPM1, EPM1 minimum. So, we talk about here energy consumption in all the category A plus, A, B, C, D. Now, if we look at the lowest rating. Energy price rating for your event in the context of an EPM one ninety percent, so about two and a half thousand kilowatt hours per year for that device in the US of your event. And as we as we find up the scale, of course, that that helps to improve energy efficiency by by the design. And you can see there's a significant opportunity, um, not just for this product to be a great solution for. Preventing proliferation of viruses, and also uh, doing it whilst not consuming more energy than we do. So it, it, it pays to look under the hood of the system to understand what your filter is today, because we could be providing several solutions uh, in one application. And in this context, we're talking about uh, improved energy efficiency or energy intensity or energy consumption for the system. So if there's a commercial argument as to why. We sure shouldn't do this in a, an air handler today, be that a new design or in a filter replacement program. You, you, you always argue with uh, our, our finance managers that we need the new filters to make the system safer. Why? Well, there's a bunch of reasons why. Mr. Finance Manager, we can also save you money. And that's always one way to get, get money from the traffic to understand that energy opportunity. As well as a safe opportunity for not doing anything like this, and not being exposed to this. More so these days, the uh, pandemics all around us, so to speak. So that's a, that's a quick summary as to why A plus is important in the filter your certification and certification. This is all about energy consumption, and so we do and can hold hold the panel from the client and say. Raise the highest household capacity and the best energy efficiency and the country virus side project and product. So we can provide many great options uh, and best to market uh, solutions for the uh, next slide, please, Alex. Okay, so we talked earlier about the Luxembourg Institute of Science and Technology, or this. Uh, we will talk briefly now about some of the, the, the validation of our claims here. So the Institute performed what's called a bacterial filtration efficiency test, or BFP, which uh, is on filtration materials and devices designed to protect against biological aerosols. This is pretty common in the health sector, uh, but we also run this same test uh, across the filters to, to, to validate the claims. Ultra Plus in this test has achieved a BFP of 99.8%. Uh, so that's 0.2%. Okay. The last one or reasons 0.2%. We're talking about uh, likely the filter frame being the, 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 point of, the point of inefficiency across the filter. Right. So these are frame, and the only frame, the filter itself is, is the only surface area which does the work. Uh, the BFB um, is something 29.8% of the filter, extraordinarily strong outcome in the inefficiency. This also tested for viral load reduction by proof of material polymorphic standards. Uh, so, according to the European Standard 1894, it has results through a VLR viral load reduction of 99.99% after one hour. And in, in a similar test back by ISO in, a, in, the, company, in the context of 2705, this is adapted to account for the full of coronavirus strain MS2, okay, which is the closest to our own coronavirus we have here. Tests show a VLR of 59.21% after 12 months. Okay. Why only 12 months? Well, the product uh, has been in rapid development deployment um, and testing for this period. Now, consider we've had uh, COVID 19 in, in, in the environment globally for um, some, somewhere around two years. So, a rapid deployment of technology from the health sector to the filtration sector uh, gives us time to. Developing test the technology and to commercialize it in the market. So, it's the five months. 
Through the future years, as we'll see along the life cycle of the product uh, in the field and in blood testing, we, we'll be able to uh, uh, talk to okay, the, the effectiveness or efficacy of, of those filters in a VLR or a BFD. That would give us more time. Just to explain this slide, this is a real project. Um, I can't give you the name yet because it's uh, I see with the customer at this stage. But this is a real life comparison between an existing F7 filter in an ASU on site in New South Wales, where the customer wanted to use the Deltrian filter instead. Now, they had some concern because being an F9 filter, they thought the pressure drop would be really, really high compared to the current F7. So when we looked at the project, we realized the filters were selected at 1.7 meter per second. When we put that in our graph and we compare with the uh, Deltry filter, we find out the Deltry filter only has 62 PA pressure drop as an initial filter whereas F7 had 90 PA. So that shows that despite being more efficient, the way the filter is manufactured allows us to have a lower pressure drop than a traditional filter. So I said, this is a real life comparison. So if you guys have any concern on, yeah, well, F9 is way better than F7. Well, you don't have any real impact on your pressure drop. You improve your indoor air quality. You, on top of that, inactivate viruses and bacteria. And in this case, you reduce your energy consumption on site. Peter, that's the uh, conclusion for you. Thank you, Alex. And I apologize for some audio changes. I remember watching the notes below the scenes. Like a bit like a call, let's say. So, closing remarks. So, uh, we've taken you uh, through uh, the outdoor and indoor air quality and revolution and the beginning of the ventilation revolution. Now, if you were online earlier, you would have seen some quotes uh, of, of the marketplace in recent months, which we've been uh, uh, collating as much as we've all been reading. So, we very much are in the middle of the indoor air quality revolution as much as we are a ventilation revolution. Uh, globally, and we're seeing this through our global business. Current technology does exist today to solve these indoor air quality challenges, not just the uh, current pandemic, but also issues of, uh, of history, which are which, which tend, to be, tend to be being focused on sick building syndrome and adequate ventilation rates in our buildings to, to ensure we're providing a safe workplace and environment for our tenants. So we know we have technology today to, to, to attack the air quality uh, with our ventilation solutions. And this includes having to include uh, these high profile filters. What's interesting is we, we talked about net zero, we talked about um, upgraded systems, but I don't think we focus enough as an industry or as a, as a, as a collective on the existing plant that we have in all buildings in all environments around the world. This is the lighting. The lowest of the hanging fruit where existing plant optimization, as well as new plant installation, can we do these new technologies can make our building safer and more energy efficient. Okay, so this is a, a, a little air quality and ventilation discussion today, but equally we can tackle energy efficiency at the coal face uh, with all sorts of solutions. So when we, we, we hear of COP26 and um, you know, the, the net zero discussion for 2050. It's all within our reach within the sector because we have the technology, we have the smarts, we just need to bring this to, to, the, to the street level such that we can make the current systems we have better, safer, and more energy efficient. All the while, when we're looking at new plant and new buildings and new construction, we can talk about passive house and passive building, uh, high efficiency systems, high efficiency filtration, etc. So we have even the efficiency today to solve today's problems as well as tomorrow's. So net zero. Really is our opportunity and responsibility now. But it doesn't require government intervention, it requires innovation and decision making from those who 
for the first thing to provide us with our guidance in terms of working with. So thank you very much uh, for joining us today. Uh, there'll be time to open the floor to some questions, I believe, and we've also got the Q&A and chat running as well. So we'll uh, look forward to engaging with you all in the question time here, as well as in further follow-up um, with, with our friends. Thanks again. I will stop sharing my screen, guys, so we can continue in answering your question. All right, Sarah, you say we have some questions? We do have some questions. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, we can. Awesome. All right. First question is from AJ. Can the Delta Ray filter come in standard filter frame sizes? Yes, I'll, I'll pick this up, Alex. Um, we have um, across the, the company portfolio very uh, Quite, quite a large length of breadth of air handling and HRV products from the global product group. So we do have a very vast, a vast array of filter sizes to fit all sorts of air handlers that we manufacture, as well as for the general market. So what we've focused on so far in the Australian market or this local market are two sizes. Um, 592 by 592, which is the, the frame size, by 400 deep. Now we didn't talk about that earlier, in the manufacturing process, the maximum bag size we can produce is 400 millimeters deep. Now, that's not the lot that's not doesn't cover necessarily the longest bag filters in the market today, but we overcome that with, uh, with a, 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 a pocket density of 11 pockets per filter and a full size filter. And we can also, uh, so therefore, we've got the, the density of the filter in, in the, the square, the square medium, so to speak, but in a, in a shorter bag. Uh, so we have two sizes, the 592 by 592 by 400, that's the full size bag, and the 287 by 287 by 400, which is the half width bag, which helps to fill in the gaps when you have those gaps in your in the filter section or the top of the section. But we can, we can answer any of the questions specific to your project. We do have four arrays which you have to see. So, so. I hope you guys uh, hear everything Peter just said. If, if it's not, just feel free to, to say it in the chat. Because your, your mic is a bit distorted here. All right. Any Next other question? question. Oops, sorry. You ready, Alex? No, no, I was asking if there is a, another question. Yep, we've got several. The next question is from John. Can the media be applied to panel filters or only deep bed filters? At this time, just bag filters. Um, it's going to the bag filters due to the density of the, of the, of the, of the application. For the foreseeable future, there'll be no panel or V form filters with Delta plus or plus. All right, so I, I will repeat just that one because I, I could not hear you, Peter. So I don't know if uh, I'll ask the question come here. So for the moment, it's it's only on back filters. Um, we, we are working in the background to extend that to something else, but there is no information on when that's going to be ready. So for the time being, only on back filters. Okay. We've got another question. Let's see. Um, this one's about shelf life. Is the shelf life of the filter based on usage or based on time? If it is based on time, how can the age of the filter be verified once installed into the system? All right, so this is based on usage. Um, the varicidal filter itself will not get damaged over time. So this is why you can use this filter for up to 12 months. What will damage your filter and what make, what? Well, the reason why you have to change it is the quantity of dust that you will collect. So you just change your filter based on how much dust you have collected over this month, not based on the virus item. So if you were, if you have a site today where you change your back filter every six months, then you would do the exact same thing with the Deltrian filter. If you change it every 12 months, then it's the same. You change your Deltrian filter every 12 months. It is just based on the dust you have collected. I hope that answers your question. 
All right, we've got a few more questions coming in. Um, there's a couple about pressure drop. What is the pressure drop of Delta Rack Plus filters? That's from AJ. Sure, so the pressure drop is quite low. Um, as an initial pressure drop, when we look at 2.5 meter per second, this is only 98 PA. When we compare with an equivalent EPM 85% or an F9, for example, from someone else, we are usually 10 to 30 PA lower. And with the live example I used, you could see that for exchanging against F7, we were about 30 PA less as an initial pressure drop with the air trim. So 2.5 meter per second would be 98. And anything below 2.5, obviously, the pressure drop would reduce accordingly. Okay, a couple more. Um, this is from Benjamin. In the example of the pressure drop between the F7 and Delta A Plus, was the existing F7 filter tested on site and a new, oh, sorry. Was the existing F7 filter tested on site a new filter so no, it, or a loaded filter? Sorry. Okay, so it was initial pressure drop versus another initial pressure drop. It was clean filter against another clean filter. So the F7 on site had a 90 PA clean filter pressure drop. So it was uh, purely a uh, on, on paper, a calculation base, because it was to convince the customer and show the difference between the existing filter and the new filter. So it's a clean filter versus another clean filter. By the way, the final pressure drop remained the same. It's about 300 PA. So there is no need to worry about that one. Okay, two more. Uh, what is the procedure for disposal disposal of contaminated filters? So the, the Deltrian filter is not considered as a contaminated filter. The main reason is because those viruses and those bacteria are in effect uh, inactivated within 10 minutes. So you would dispose of the Deltrian filter as you would dispose of a traditional bag filter. So there is no risk, it's not a contaminated filter. And the last one, can you confirm approximate clean filter and fully loaded filter pressure drop at 1.8 meters a second velocity? Um, so I, I don't have the value with me right now. I can get back to you with uh, an exact information. But what I do know is the selection I did with this F7, the Deltrian was 62 PA. So if we were at 1.8, I would expect something around 70 PA only. But if you send me an email and you have a, a real example, we can look into it. Final pressure drop would still be 300 PA. That's fine. It doesn't change. So everyone, that does bring us to the end of today's presentation. Um, I'd just like to thank everyone who registered um, and attended today's presentation. A special thanks goes out to Pacific Ventilation um, and, of course, our presenters, um, Alexandra and Peter as well. Um, as I mentioned earlier on, this is our first Technology Talk webinar um, and we will continue to host more of these sessions um, in 2022. Um, a copy of the recording of today's presentation will be made available um, up on the ARA website and I'll send you out an email and let you know where that does become available as well. Um, when I do send you around an email, um, if you can please spare a couple of minutes um, to fill out a quick survey, um, that'll be much appreciated um, as we'd love to hear your thoughts um, and get your feedback on the first technology talk session as well. So thank you all again. Thank you, Pacific Ventilation. Um, I hope everyone did enjoy today's session and I look forward to you joining me uh, once again soon. So thank everyone. And in the meantime, take care. Thank you, everybody.